Carabao Cup draw reaction. Whole heap of transfer news to go through. Let's get on with this, ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do this. There's quite a lot of things to go through. First up, Champions League draw. Um, I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out for Chelsea. I mean, we'll go through all the groups, but as you can see, Group E, AC Milan, Chelsea, Salzburg, Dynamo Zagreb. We get to see Rafael Leal. We get to see Tomori. We get to see Giroud. So it's going to be quite exciting uh, to, to come up come up against that team. They've actually got a decent team. They're the Serie A champions, so this is no mug at, at all. Salzburg as well, um, you know, that, that up-and-coming superstar, Sesco. Um, and generally, Salzburg, they do a run in the Champions League. So, look, I fully expect us to come either first or second. I'm not taking it for granted that we're 100% coming first, but you probably, you know, you, you'd say we're a good bet for it, but AC Milan is going to be very, very difficult. But nonetheless, we should come out of that group without any issues. But look at that Champions League draw. Look at Group A. That is dynamic. Ajax, Liverpool, Napoli, Rangers. Liverpool struggling at the moment. And, you know, those teams, Ajax, Napoli and Rangers, that ain't going to be easy. For me, that's probably close to being the group of death. But I think we're going to get to group of them very, very soon. Group B is a bit of a joke. Porto, Athletic Commentary, Leverkusen, Club Bruges. I'm very interested to see Callum hudson for Leverkusen. Hopefully he makes that switch to Leverkusen. I think this is more reason now. You're going to get Champions League football, and um, I can't wait to do some watch-alongs for Leverkusen. Now, Group C. Have a look at this, people. Have a look at this. Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Inter Milan, La Caca. Vittoria Pleasant, you might as well just put up the white flag and just surrender because you're going to be the biggest whooping boys in that group. I don't know, man. I don't know if Barcelona is going to actually make it through because Inter Milan, they, they are looking all right again with Lukaku, Letaro Martinez, um, and all the other players that they have. They are looking very decent. Um, but yeah, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Lewandowski to meet uh, Bayern Munich, which is going to be interesting. As I said, Victoria Plus, and please <laughs> step aside. Group D for me, for me, Group C is the group of death. Look, if if I was to do a prediction, Group A, I think it's probably going to be Liverpool, Ajax. I know Napoli, Rangers. I know Magzina. Group B, you'd think Atletico Madrid would go through. I would love to see Leverkusen to make it as the second team. Come on, Callum Tanodoy. I know the deal hasn't been done for Callum. But I'm, I'm still already. Rooting for Leverkusen. Group D, look, this is a straightforward group for Tottenham Hotspurs. Frankfurt, Tottenham, Sporting, Marseille. Fully expect Tottenham to go through as first. And probably after that, either Marseille or, or uh, Frankfurt. Sporting has lost Mateus and Nunez as well to Wolves. Group E, AC Milan, Chelsea, Salzburg, Dynamo, Zagreb. That's what I said. Look, I, I'm hoping we come first. I'm going with Chelsea, Milan as the... Group winners, Group F, straightforward for Real Madrid. Real Madrid, Leipzig, Timo Werner gets to play against Real Madrid. Shakhtar, Celtic, Australian coach for Celtic, uh, which is going to be quite interesting to see. Postacoglu, so do look out for that. I think I think that one's going to be Real Madrid and Leipzig there. Don't know if Shakhtar can pose any issue. Group G, ladies and gentlemen, Man City, Sevilla, Dortmund, Copenhagen, Erling Haaland meeting his uh, former club, Dortmund, which is going to be interesting as well. But I fully expect Man City to top that group. I think Man City is going to absolutely... I think Haaland is absolutely going to murder every single team over there. Um, second, you'd think it's probably going to be Dortmund. Could possibly be Sevilla as well. Who knows? Group H is not bad either. PSG, Juventus, Benfica, good good setup there. Maccabi Haifa, I don't think it's got much, much of a chance. PSG are looking different this season, ladies and gentlemen. For me, I think it's going to be PSG, Benfica. Maybe Juventus just misses out. Angel de Maria has played for PSG, has played for Benfica, so it's going to be quite interesting to see what happens there. Ladies and gentlemen, you let me know what your feelings are towards the Champions League draw. I think it's it's quite a suitable draw for us, which is fine. Okay, let's get in all these uh, other news. We haven't even had the chance to talk about Carabao Cup. Carabao Cup draw took place yesterday. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure it was yesterday. Our Car Carabao Cup journey begins with a trip to Manchester City. This is apparently the third... Can you believe it? Third round. Like, already look at Reese James, the grimace. Um, yeah, some, one could say that, oh, my God, he's, he's, he's 
probably um, worried about this time. I mean, look, has for me this is a final. How's this a third round match? Like I don't understand. Third round, like there's all these other teams we could have drawn. Manchester City, out of all of them, my God. Look, third round. It's a, it's a trophy that we have a chance of winning. <laughs> then again, last season we saw um, how difficult it is to win anything, and uh, in recent times with losing finals. But I, I don't know. Some of you guys are saying, "No, nah, you got to play the you know players in this cup match. You got to play those players and get the minutes against Man City. We play those." You know, kids or, or whoever else, the players that are not getting the minutes uh, or play regularly. I think Man City's B team will take us apart. So, look, I would want us to play our strongest team so that we can at least move forward to the next round. I think it'll be disappointing to get knocked out in the third round. Um, but it is Man City. We've we've got to do our level best to kick them out. That's um, that's the bottom line. Stone Paul said so. Okay, let's talk about some transfer news now, ladies and gentlemen. This is how the day started. Aubameyang is at the airport. His move to Chelsea is about to be completed. This is going to happen. Let's get excited. Obama blood clap. Yeah, and come on, come on. Uh, look, I wanted him to be featuring for Leicester uh, against Leicester, but that's probably not going to happen. But nonetheless, some big, big fixtures coming up. Obviously, Champions League around the corner. I'm glad this is in the bag. Hopefully, tomorrow um, or maybe after the Leicester game now. I don't know. Are they going to actually announce it before the Leicester game? Probably not. Um, but we'll see. It'll be such a good lift, I suppose. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Aubameyang is going to happen. Um, I think there was another consequent tweet here. Yeah. Aubameyang is flying to Paris with his family. His Chelsea transfer is almost complete. And the word is that it is now pretty much done and dusted. Uh, we're going to pay Barcelona cash, somewhere around 25 million euros or something like that, uh, maybe a tad more. But look, whatever it is, we need a striker and it's happening. Chelsea are demanding 37 million for Ziyech. Negotiations are stuck between Chelsea and Ajax. This could be bad news for Anthony. I don't think it's bad news for Anthony. I think Anthony will leave to Man United. Uh, Man United are about to table a huge bid for Anthony. Look, I understand why we're asking for so much, 37 million, because we're looking at the money that Ajax is going to bring in. But are we in any position to ask for such amounts? Like Ziyech's stocks are low. I know his stocks in Ajax are high. And some of you guys might say that, you know, there's not enough time and Ajax need a replacement. I get it. But Ajax's scouts, they're not sleeping around. They're not like Chelsea. They're, they're taking a nap. I'm pretty sure they would have anticipated that Anthony was probably going. And I'm, I would be very surprised if they don't have someone lined up from their academy or somewhere else around the world. This is what I'm saying. Don't prize Ziyech out because literally Ajax will walk away from it. Ajax is not a club that, oh, just because we make money, you're going to throw all that all that, all that, that, that price tag on Ziyech and we're just going to accept it. They'll walk away from it. And what you get out of that is a disgruntled player that, you know, Ziyech doesn't have a future at Chelsea Football Club. Thomas Tuchel doesn't utilise him the way he wants him to be utilised. Uh, Ziyech wants him. So let's do the right thing. For me, a fair value was something around 20 to 25 million um, in between that. 37 million. No, nah, man, that's, that's, that's a bit outrageous for me. Ladies and gentlemen, you let me know how you feel about it. For me, I don't want Ajax to move away from this. Uh, I want that deal to be done. Anthony Gordon to Chelsea is waiting for Chairman Ben Kenwright to accept the offer, which will give Lampard funds to spend 60 million. You know, the recent news I saw, ladies and gentlemen, is apparently they're going to knock back 60 million. Apparently, I don't know what they value Gordon. This is ridiculous. Like, we're already in ridiculous waters. Now we're getting into insanely ridiculous waters. Like, Everton. Accept that 60 million and let's just move on with this now. Like you need players, you you've got the money, you're financially in stress as well, because because of FFP making losses through pandemic and whatnot. Um, and you want to buy players, you don't have money. Take the money and just look, just give us Gordon now. As much as I've said it, that money is ridiculous. He's still a very good player, but for me, that money is ridiculous. I wouldn't do that, um, do this transfer with that level of money, but Thomas Tuchel wants him, so let's back him. Um, but I, we shouldn't go any more than 60 million, if I'm being absolutely honest about this scenario. Chelsea's idea is to now keep Kepa, but the last decision will be taken soon. Demacio. Look, I'm actually a bit weary about letting go of Kepa now. 
I'm not certain about Mendy's mind frame and Mendy's ball playing abilities getting quite exposed. This is not the first time what happened last weekend. Real Madrid, West Ham last season, and there's been plenty other instances where there was mishap here and there. Like this guy's ball playing ability is getting exposed big time, and now at times he's starting to miss some of those shot stopping moments as well. Look. I would actually, I might actually play Kepa this weekend just to spice things up a little, just to sort of shake things up a little bit with, with Mendy, just to let him know, mate, you've got competition. You need to start focusing again. I don't know if I would let go of Kepa as much as I wanted him to go and, and get that opportunity elsewhere, but maybe he's got an opportunity at Chelsea Football Club. Look, he's got his own flaws. <laughs> People are going to start pinging shots from far now, but... We need some competition, and I'm not, I'm not sure if Betanelli is a good uh, level of competition. Let me know, ladies and gentlemen, how you feel about Mendy. Mendy's been a bit funny in terms of in terms of form, all right? I, I don't forget what he's done for Chelsea Football Club. I think he's still a top-quality shot stopper, but that ball-playing ability, if, you're gonna, if we're going to start our build-up and it's going to all start from Mendy, you better be good on the ball. It's much like that Man United scene with David De Gea. James Madison is a doubt to face Chelsea this weekend and Fofana is not in the squad. We've got some latest Fofana news coming up. Look, at this stage, it's clear as crystal. He doesn't want to be a Leicester. Leicester's looking to offload him as well because why aren't you putting in the squad? We need to just make this decision, right? I don't like how this has transpired where Fofana, his head is gone and this, that, the other. I hope Fofana, you know, in a couple of years' time when you do come to Chelsea that you don't turn your head if Bayern Munich knocks on the door or Real Madrid knocks on the door or PSG, because I know you're French and PSG were interested for you. If you do this shenanigans that you're doing at Leicester with Chelsea, you're going to be in trouble, I'm telling you right now. We're paying a lot of money to bring you over. And let's not forget, Leicester rewarded you with that contract extension to take you to five years after you had that horrific injury and you signed it literally four months ago or something like that, five months ago. And... and the first opportunity you get to leave Leicester, you left. And I get it. Leicester's not the destination, the final destination. But some would have thought maybe you reward Leicester with staying there for one season at least before you think about moving. It gives me an impression you, yeah, when a better offer will come around, uh, when you're at Chelsea, you'll probably make the move as well. And something that I'm very, very weary about because we're paying top dollars for you and you're going to be on top wages as well. Uh, hopefully you work out and hopefully you stay at Chelsea for a long time because that's the reason we are getting you, a long-term vision. Frankie de Jong's agent has just arrived in Barcelona from London. Now, I initially thought arrived from uh, London and I'm thinking, oh, did he you know, visit us at Stamford Bridge? But some people were saying to me, Man United's offices are in London. I had no idea if this is true. Uh, to the people in the comment section, please let me know. Is... Man United's offices or some of their offices in London, I'm not sure. And there's some news now. Apparently, Man United are back in the race. Look, I'm over it. I'm over this whole Frankie de Jong situation. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If Man United gets Frankie de Jong, they're going to be quite strong on top of um, Casemiro, Eriksen, and the likes and how they've played against Liverpool. I know against other teams that sit back, they're going to have to do their bits or teams that kind of press amazingly well, like Brentford, they're going to have to do the bits, but Frankie Dion will go a long way for them. Frankie Dion will go a long way for us. I think he gives us something different in that midfield. Just behind the strikers, he can pull those strings and play those key passes. He'd be amazing. Armando Broja has returned to Chelsea training today. Good news. But what does this mean in regards to if Aubameyang comes in? There's rumours, there's been wide reports talking about Broha might leave if, if there's another attacker come through or if there's another striker, as you know. Havertz already plays that position. Sterling at times plays false nine. Aubameyang coming in as well. That poses a bit of a concern for Armando Broha. I want him to stay. I want him to stay and learn from these players and get those odd minutes, get those cup matches. But Armando Broha, maybe, maybe, maybe he doesn't want just those cup minutes or the odd minutes here and that he wants to play on a regular basis. So watch this space. Newcastle, well, I don't know about Newcastle anymore. They've got themselves uh, Isak, uh, Alexander Isak from uh, Sweden, which is another fantastic signing for Newcastle. Um, they're, they're, they're doing some decent business, Newcastle, seriously. Uh, Gomez, Isak, uh, Trippier. Um, yeah, that, that's decent for them. 
Amanda Broha, maybe maybe Everton. Who knows? Um, watch this space. Breaking Chelsea's new bid will be around 75 million for Fana. This is the breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, at the moment. For Fana, we're going in for the fourth bid 75 million now i'm not sure whether this is 75 million add-ons included i think it is they are working on a structure right now apparently that what is the best form of cash and add-ons together 75 million we know leicester stance was 80 but maybe 75 is that just going to do it look this is the fourth bit this better be it because if this is rejected I think we walk away and I think Leicester just says goodbye as well. Time is running out. This has to be accepted from Leicester. This really has to. But will they? Um, that's what I'm thinking. I'm hoping they do now. Honestly, we've invested so much time on, on invested and wasted, if, if I'm being honest, because that type of money is mad once again. <sighs> this better happen now. This better happen now. And um, it'll be, I'll be keen to see how exactly, you know, Fafana is placed for us. Uh, uh, right, uh, right side at CB or CCB, center CB. Look, fourth bid, 75 million. That will be included, inclusive of add-ons. <sighs> I hope this gets accepted. I really do. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you feel about every little bit of news we've gone through. Let me know how you feel about the Champions League draw, Carabao Cup draw, Aubameyang coming through, hopefully in the next 24 to 48 hours. He's most likely going to be a Chelsea player. Anthony Gordon, Apparently, Everton won more money. Armando Broha possibly going there, maybe, with Aubameyang coming in. Fofana, 75 million. Fourth bid. Love to hear from each and every one of you guys. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a bumper weekend coming up, um, of course, with uh, a yeah, press conference tomorrow. We'll have a live show and whatnot. And heaps of stuff, heaps of stuff, heaps of watch along. Until then, see ya.